What sticks out most to me is the amount of loss, personal loss and business loss, and all of these businesses and homes belongings were floating down the street, hanging from trees. For the fire department, the evacuation actually started back on May 15th because there were some flash flood warnings out. We were monitoring the situation. We were looking at possible scenarios for the rest of the day or possible flood events. About five o'clock, we had a meeting up to the Edenville Dam. A group of uh, fire chiefs met with uh, representatives from the state, Boyce Hydro and others, and we're discussing the possibility of doing a controlled breach on a high point in the dam. And uh, while we're having that conversation, the dam actually started to breach. From that point on, it was very high speed because like I said, there's just under 700, 700 houses in the evacuation plan. And in the plan, it calls for the water to reach Edenville to Sanford in under two hours. We received the first text alert that said essentially the dam breach is going to happen and we were like okay we were really in disbelief it's like it might happen and then it wasn't too long after that that we got the second alert that was no it's really going to break and we were like wait a second and we just kind of had to sit with that for a minute and realize how big that was um that's a catastrophic event and the more that you sit with it you realize how big that's going to be and and that's dangerous The impact of Saginaw was a lot different than it was up here in Sanford because um, we didn't really get as much notification that this was happening. We didn't get like any kind of emergency alerts. We had about 30 minutes to pack up whatever we needed to get and get our kids and, and leave. I honestly figured we would get through those first 24 hours. If we can feed people for 24 hours, if we can make sure everybody has a roof to stay under, if we can make sure nobody's sleeping in their car, which was happening, by then, natural national orgs will be in here and they will be able to help us. They will know what to do, they will know how to get the resources we need, FEMA will come, trailers will come, this will happen. If we can just get through these first 24 hours, somebody will be here that knows what they're supposed to do and we will not be in this role anymore. Just get through the first 24 hours. And then it was 48 hours. Uh, I, I think one of the things that always stood out, I kept waiting for the hammer to drop as far as finding out there was loss of life or somebody seriously injured. You can't move thousands of people without some sort of accident or somebody getting hurt. And uh, I kept waiting for that. And I, I knew when we did the, the search with the National Guard, that was going to turn up some missing people or something. And for the days after that, we continued working with the Sheriff's Department and other agencies uh, searching for missing people, and they were all accounted for. Uh, that has me in awe to this day that there was no casualties and no major injuries. Everybody got out safe. Foundations broke, garage floors separated, homes you know, were separated from their garages, doors don't close. Heat ducts were pulled off of the joists underneath houses. If you look at this, these houses, you don't see a lot of damage. It's when you get in and you start inspecting that the very infrastructure that these homes are built on has been destroyed. Just thinking back to the initial event, I think it's really important to remember some of the individuals and the work that they did at the ground level. Uh, individuals like Yvette Keast, who was a representative and leader for the Gladwin County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, individuals like Heath Kaplan, Beaverton City Manager. Uh, individuals at Billings Township Hall and their leadership and those from the fire and rescue of Billings Township Hall. All of those individuals came together and many, many more. Uh, to create um, a center where individuals could come and get water and get food and, and then volunteers would come in and take those, those goods out on a daily basis to the individuals who were affected by the flood in their homes. And um, It was really a, a telling time of the community coming together and supporting individuals from the community as well. The response that happened here in the greater Sanford area happened because the community came together. It happened because men and women, a lot of women, that have been here their entire lives or had moved here and really enjoy the Sanford area wanted to make sure that their neighbors were taken care of, that the volunteers that came from out of state, which were many, were taken care of. We've got people that are resilient, compassionate, 
um, I'm ready to act in any situation. The, uh, the phrase that we hear a lot um, recently of we're in this together isn't just a phrase, it's part of our DNA. I was amazed at all of the local companies that came with all of their equipment, the retirees that came to run the equipment. Everyone came to the rescue, people from out of state, people from downstate. They spent weeks here, weeks in hotels, their personal time, their personal equipment. So it was pretty amazing uh, showing the love to our community when we were facing devastation. My husband and I are both military veterans, so when the dam failure hit, we jumped in right away with both feet and said, how can we help? And uh, just through our efforts, we were able to organize and help over 50 homes do full demolitions. Um, we had people, over 2,000 people reach out to us just offering assistance. Um, and some of the most meaningful moments for me were not even uh, ripping out the drywall, it was sitting with that homeowner that was watching all of their their items be taken out to the curb, um, explaining to a homeowner that maybe their items were contaminated, so maybe it, they shouldn't be touching them, um, and kind of watching that realization hit their face. Um, those moments are the moments that really stick with you. Hundreds if not thousands of people have invested their time and energy and helping others clean up and things. Yeah, I, I can't do an interview without giving uh, kudos to the men and women of Jerome Township Fire Department and all, all the county fire departments because everybody pitched in. At that time we had uh, 16 people here. Of those 16 people, over 70% of them had their own houses flooded. Either crawl spaces or basement flooded or water in their house. And they still hung till the, the community was taken care of. So. Uh, for those individuals on the fire department and, and a, a huge shout out to their families because the wives wait patiently for their husbands to come home or vice versa to help with their cleanup. Lisa Hall and the central dispatch team at Middle County 911, I, I can't say enough about them. They're, this, they're that calm voice all the time on the radio. If you needed something, they would make it happen. A daily call volume for them is about 250 and I believe they had like 1,380 calls at that 24-hour period, the first 24 hours of the flood. And uh, there was only, I think, seven of them that had to wait more than 10 seconds to be answered. Her team did a fantastic job. It's been incredible to see the amount of businesses, individuals, organizations, churches um, from across the state and across the country that have stepped up to help in any way they could from providing food and meals to demoing houses, to rebuilding houses, and just providing supplies um, either free or at discounted rates throughout all of these projects and clean up both the cleanup and rebuilding. No matter who we called, 90% of the time it was, what do you need and where can we send it? And all of a sudden all these people show up and they're just pouring their heart out and giving their personal time, digging in mud, walking through mud, uh, cleaning off people's personal belongings to give back to them and just, uh, right down there in the thick of things, helping uh, clean everything up. It was pretty amazing, something I've never experienced in my life. The response after the flood was uh, really what was motivating and inspiring just as a community member. Uh, being able to witness the varieties of people coming out of the woodworks uh, willing to help there was a lot of activity from both the organizations and um, just your standard next door neighbor um, looking for ways that they can be of best service the, to the community. Um, there wasn't anybody that was sitting on their hands. Everybody was reaching out, um, mucking out, ripping out drywall, insulation, um, just doing everything they can to make sure that uh, community members were safe and taken care of. Um, it's a true inspiration story, and it's great to st still see community members uh, reaching out to, to continue even a, a year later. You know, there were people coming from Midland bringing us food, and it was just crazy because I'm like, why is everybody come like, all these people are coming all the way from Stanford to make sure that me and my kids have food and water and bleach. Um, a lot of businesses found ways to be mobile and to be, stay connected with their clientele, but those families that could have been in their home months sooner 
All that being said, I think that MDOT, I think the county, our, our local officials, you know, volunteers from this community have done everything they can to get the infrastructure to where it needed to be so people could move quickly, but it was incredibly difficult. At Three Rivers, we had some employees, many employees that were affected by the flooding. And as a company, we knew it was our position to step up and support our community in any way we could um, and deliver the resources and step out of our normal work pattern. Response here in this area and the way people were taken care of and the way things were cleaned up and the way volunteers were managed was because of the work that a group of people that couldn't just sit back and watch things happen. It's what we did. Sanford Strong put together a Facebook page which became famous very fast. Thousands and thousands of people exchanging information on who needed help and where and just organizing people to get to individuals' homes and get them to safety and help them clean up. A lot of love poured out through the Sanford Strong movement. Never did I imagine that we were starting something that was going to snowball or become disaster relief or was going to be a communication path for so many people in our community, lead to so many folks that wanted to help. I just wanted somewhere for the conversation to happen. And so for me, I'm the type of person in my work and in my life that if there is a problem, I'm going to find a solution. If there is something that is happening that I can be effective in, I will find a solution. And so my solution was there needs to be better communication, we need to draw attention to the area, and I can create a Facebook page where we can do that. So we made one, people quickly started joining it. We have successfully stabilized Secord and Smallwood dams. We're working on the stabilization of Edenville dams to get those dams in a position where they can operate safely until we're able to get together the funds for the restoration, ultimately the rebuild of those dams to get the lakes back. Groups are still meeting. Just because it's a year past doesn't mean that the individuals affected aren't still having difficulties. In fact, spoke with an individual yesterday who's still not in a home. And so the work behind the scenes is continuing through uh, community residents and, and community organizations. And that just speaks volumes for the area in which we live and work. It's almost um, overwhelming in a good way. Um, being involved in it so much over the last year and seeing where we were um, just under a year ago to where we are today. And the fact that we're still seeing things happen, there's still action and cleanups taking place and people being rebuilt and moving back into homes, businesses opening back up. Um, the communities are coming back and it's exciting just to see people out and about and enjoying life and not just worrying about how do we, how do we get to the next step. After the dams failed over the past year, there was a lot of work we knew needed to be done. Um, one thing being the previous owner, Boyce Hydro, still had the properties and we understood that we needed the counties to get control of the properties. So Four Lakes Task Force, acting as the agent of the counties, went ahead with condemnation and ultimately the counties were able to acquire the properties and FLTF is now operating those properties on behalf of the counties. And that was a really good step in the right direction towards the rebuild and restoration of the lakes. So there are a number of residents who are still in temporary housing. Our village uh, park needs to be rebuilt. We're ending up with a new park where there were once homes, but now will be a park and people have been displaced. So we still have the need to kind of show the love to people that were in the community who are displaced. So there's still a lot of rebuilding going on, not just physical, but emotional rebuilding. And a lot of camaraderie has come from this event. Over the last year, Four Lakes Task Force was able to get $17.5 million from the state of Michigan, and that's been a great help to the community. It's allowed us to focus on these projects we needed to do for restoration and recovery and our forward-looking studies um, in the last year or so. We also were able to get involved with the NRCS EWP program. They're covering 75% of these costs for erosion control, dam stabilization, and debris removal, and that's been a huge help to the community. We need people to advocate to their neighbors, to their representatives, to members in the county. If you want the lakes to come back, tell your representative you want the lakes to come back. You know, ask questions if you have concerns or questions. Reach out to Four Lakes Task Force. Let us know your questions and concerns. It's been almost a year and people are still going strong, helping out. People haven't given up. 
and that's pretty amazing. I, I, it's a, it's a great takeaway uh, of, of, a, of a disaster to have such great camaraderie come out of it. A lot of people think that now that a year's passed that the work is done, but it's, it's not. We have volunteer opportunities every single week. Um, United Way is very good at partnering uh, with the local community to, to see what the unmet needs are. So when you register to volunteer with United Way, you're being put in place with the most relevant need at that time. There's routine assessments to see what that need is, and right now it really is volunteerism.